presentation is to promote the sport of sculling in the rowing community. By using our national team athletes, we want to show the beauty of the sport and to provide the athletes and their coaches with the necessary information to teach and enjoy sculling. Our sculling technique is based on simple, universal principles for moving boats. We also stress in our coaching feeling for the boat, for the water, and the efficiency of the motion over the mechanical execution of the stroke. There are three types of sculling boats, singles, doubles, and quads, and the rowing technique is the same for all three categories. But because of the big difference in the speed of the different boats, there is a significant difference in the dynamics and the speed of the execution of the stroke. For example, it is definitely much more difficult to make a good catch or a clean finish in a fast boat like the quad than it is in the single. There are several rowing styles among scholars. The most noticeable differences are among the athletes who train mostly in the single and have developed their own style. Usually these style differences are due to the different builds of athletes, different levels of flexibility, different degrees of coordination, and so on. Despite the differences, we realize that all boats are moved by the following same simple principles. In spite of the common perception, we do not pull the blades through the water. To the contrary, we lock the blades in the water and then we push the boat past them. To do so, we need good placement of the blade in the water and a lot of feeling and patience as we execute the push of the boat. The drive has to be hard enough to move the boat, but not so hard that you tear the water. All rowing boats are propelled by the rower's weight suspended between the oar handles and the footboards. This hanging on the oar dictates a logical sequence of work for the major muscles. The drive starts with the legs, followed by the back, and then finishes with the arms. You can see the overlapping of muscle groups as this athlete goes through the drive. The third principle is that all motion in the boat is related to the speed of the boat. Everything starts with the placement of the blade in the water, followed by the passive hanging on the oar, the work of the legs, back and arms, which creates the hanging on the oars is related to the speed of the boat. This special harmony between the moving athletes and the boats creates an easy flow. Let's start to analyze the sculling technique by using the three principles. The placement of the blade in the water is the most important part of the rowing stroke. We need good placement without slippage to be able to hang on the oar and we need good placement to be able to push the boat. Once the athlete is suspended on the oar, the rest of the stroke falls into place by itself. Placement, catch or scoop as we like to call it, is also the most difficult skill to execute correctly 
and efficiently. When we talk about placement, we have to talk about body preparation. Only with good preparation, with good relaxation, is it possible to execute correct placement. Body preparation starts with the motion out of bow, which should be a smooth, lovely motion that does not disturb the run of the boat. The hands flow away, pulling the shoulders forward, followed by the slide in one continuous flowing motion. Simply, it is hands, body, and slide. By half slide, the arms are completely stretched. The body is at maximum reach position, and the athlete is prepared to continue gliding forward and to place the blade in the water. At the moment of placement, the shin should be almost vertical in full compression. The relaxed upper body is leaning forward from the hips, and the arms are stretched. The actual placement is quite a difficult task. The last part of the slide going forward should be very relaxed and controlled. This relaxation will give the impression of slowing down. It will create a little more time to raise the hands as we are still going forward to place the blades in the water just before the change of direction of the seat. just before we put pressure on the footboards. The common drill, top quarter slide, demonstrates very clearly what is happening at the top of the slide. It makes it very visible how the hands motion up and the scoop of the blades into the water anticipates the moment of putting pressure on the footboards. Everything is a matter of coordination and correct timing. In this image, the blades are already in the water and the body weight is suspended on the oar handle. Here is the first part of the drive. The muscles of the back, shoulders, and the arms provide a firm connection and transition of power from the legs to the blades. The athlete is moving horizontally towards the bow. It looks like passive hanging, like there isn't any pulling at all. At the beginning of this phase, the blades are approaching perpendicular, which is the most mechanically efficient part of the stroke. There is some knee angle left, the seed is in the last quarter of the slide, and the upper body is suspended in a vertical position, and this is very important, the arms are still straight. The last push of the legs going down will initiate the beginning of the body swing. It appears as if the body swing is ready to take over from the legs drive. This overlap of upper body taking over the leg drive guarantees a good connection and steady pressure on the face of the blade. Before the release of the blade from the water, the athlete continues to press on the footboards and continues hanging as he draws his hands to the body, keeping the pressure on the face of the blades and the footboards until the very last moment creates a very strong and tall body position with the chest behind the oar handles and a horizontal draw of the forearms through the body. 
With the pressure on the blades, the athlete needs only a very small motion of hands downward, and the blades will rebound out of the water and head towards the bow. The whole drive should be happening by itself. Having the blades in the water and the body suspended will dictate the natural sequence of motion, starting with the leg drive, followed by the body swing, followed by the squeezing of the arms. If the sculling stroke is executed with patience, relaxation before placing the blade in the water, patient blade work without tearing the water, easy rebound from the water at the finish, and a fluid motion of the hands, body, and slide out of the bow, it creates a very characteristic rhythm. A rhythm that looks a little lazy or like slow motion on the slide, but with a quick change of direction at the catch, invisible power, and acceleration through the water, and no hurry flow out of bow, it will look like the athletes are rowing at a lower cadence than they actually are. There's no excitement, haste, or panic at any part of the stroke. All changes of direction are smooth and fluid. Everything is happening automatically. It is a perfect state of flow. The grip is a very important part of good sculling. Learning the correct grip from the beginning will spare the athletes many problems later on. A good grip facilitates the correct execution of the stroke, especially blade placement and at the finish of the stroke. The sculling grip should be very relaxed with the thumbs on the ends of the handles, gently pushing the oars into the oar locks. The rest of the fingers should be wrapped around the handles. During the drive, the wrists are flat, and the palms of the hands do not touch the oar handle. The feathering and squaring are done with pressure by the fingers, which rotate the handles in the hook of the fingers. The wrists remain flat all of the time. This picture shows a very good draw of the hands at the end of the stroke. The elbows go through the body in a very natural way. The forearms are horizontal and the wrists are flat. Blade work has a direct impact on the speed of the boat. Even the fittest athletes become completely useless if they do not have good blade work. Many coaches spend more time on blade work because of problems like diving or athletes feathering underwater than they do on body motion. During recovery, the blade travels to the bow on a smooth, horizontal plane at a steady height. Squaring should start as the hands go over the ankles. It should be executed at a steady speed. The last part of the squaring of the blade should also be the beginning of the direct scooping of the blade into the water with as little splash as possible. And that answers the very common question of how much front or back splash should there be, as little as possible. Direct placement will secure the blade in the water and allow the athletes to hang on the oar. During the drive, the blade remains evenly buried in the water with steady pressure on the face of the blades. Pushing the hands down in a quick fluid motion will extract the blades from the water and at the same time it will release the pressure on the footboards. The effect of this action is the blades rebounding out of the water, at first squared and then feathered. The direction of the rebound of the blades out of the water is up and back towards the bow. This diagram from the U.S. Rowing Level 1 Coaching Manual is an excellent illustration of the path of the blade as it travels through the entire stroke.
Technical drills are a big part of coaching. They are used to teach and correct rowing skills. There are many different drills to choose from and we will show you the ones, in our opinion, that are the most efficient. We group them based on a specific purpose, but many of them can be used for multiple purposes. How you use the drill depends on what you want to achieve. Drills can be very useful, but they can also be overdone. It is important to explain the drills before going out on the water and describe what the drill emphasizes. Poorly executed drills can promote bad habits. For this reason, it is crucial to create optimum conditions for the athletes to be able to do the drills correctly. In most cases, the ability to balance the boat is a limiting factor. We suggest rowing one half of the crew at a time while the other half sets the boat. The most popular drill for this purpose is called pause body over. Using this drill we are looking for a clean release of the blade out of the water, easy flow of the hands around the turn followed by the shoulders. And the athletes should have all of their forward body angle by the pause. Another drill for the same purpose of improving body preparation is rowing with the paws at the finish, hands away. It is quite a mechanical drill because this situation almost never occurs during the regular stroke. It does teach patience in the bow by forcing the body to wait in the bow until the hands go away. But it can also be used to correct bent arms or lack of body swing out of the bow. The pause at half, or at three-quarters slide, stresses finishing the body preparation by a given point on the slide. The pause at three-quarters slide is also used to teach slide control just before the placement of the blade. By stopping the whole motion, with just a quarter of the slide to go, the athletes can be taught to proceed slowly up to the catch. In the drill, top quarter slide, we emphasize the easy slide forward, relaxation, and coordination between the hands lifting up, scooping the blades into the water, and stepping on the footboards. The legs only drill is more natural than the top quarter slide drill because it duplicates a larger part of the normal stroke by using the entire slide. We use the same action at the top of the slide as we did in the previous drill, raising the hands and placing the blades in the water as the seat is reaching the top of the slide, followed by direct pressure on the footboards and suspending the body weight on the oar, making the entire leg drive very relaxed and horizontal. The 
placement drill is used to teach the placement of the blade in the water as part of the recovery. The blade has to be in the water before we put any pressure on the footboards or change the direction of the seat. It starts from the finish position. We are looking for an easy constant slide speed moving forward and putting the blade in the water precisely as we reach the top of the slide. It is important to control the slide at the very end otherwise there is a tendency to rush which will create a very hard and choppy catch. This drill is a little more difficult than the placement drill because of the motion of the boat. The first part of this drill is the placement drill, but it is followed by the drive in the water and ending with a pause at the finish. We have the same slide and same blade placement on the last part of the slide, but now we have to synchronize the entry of the blades into the water with the speed of the boat. The pause at the finish gives a very uniform end to the stroke and a very uniform beginning of the slide moving forward. Be aware that when doing this drill the athletes tend to rush the slide toward the catch which will create a choppy catch. We use these drills in a logical sequence. Legs only, legs and back, followed by regular rowing. Legs only is used to create horizontal hanging on the oar and it forces the use of the legs at the beginning of the stroke. The extension of the previous drill is legs and back. It reinforces a natural transition of power from the legs to the upper body. Because it is done with the arms locked at the elbows, it forces the athletes to pivot from the hips and extends the hanging on the oars. While doing this drill, the athlete's body swing should send the boat. Rowing with a pause at the finish is a natural extension of the previous drills. It is the legs and back drill with the addition of the arms. It provides an opportunity to practice good blade placement followed by the patient beginning of the drive with the legs, transitioning to the back and finishing with the arms. This drill is excellent in helping to develop a uniform power application in bigger boats by using the visible distinction between the first part of the stroke the very patient and gradual acceleration of the boat, and then the sharp end of the motion. Many top scholars row with this rhythm of the pause at the finish, and while rowing fast, it looks only like a small hesitation at the finish. The sequence of arms only, back and arms, quarter slide, and half slide can have a few different applications. More or less, it teaches the whole stroke, but because the strokes are very short and everything is happening a little faster, it makes the finish of the stroke quicker than normal. For this reason, the sequence is used often to sharpen finishes.
arms only is one of the most basic exercises. The athletes sit at the back of the slide and the entire stroke is done with the arms. If it is done correctly, with some pressure on the footboards, the blades will rebound out of the water by themselves. Back and arms, sometimes called pick swing drill, teaches coordination between the body swing, arms, and the release of the blades from the water. It can be done on the square or with a feather. The key points are placing the blades in the water, finding resistance, hanging on straight arms at least until the body passes the vertical position, and keeping pressure on the footboards until the blade pops out of the water. Rowing with the paws and the body over is probably the best way to work on the finish of the stroke in terms of the blade work and body motion. It creates a little exaggerated body swing followed by a solid push of the boat which then creates a very clean rebound of the blades out of the water. The hands to the gunnel drill is a version of the pause body over drill with the difference being at the finish where the hands make a very deep circular motion down and away into the boat and then they stop when they touch the gunnels. This very circular release from the water creates a very patient send of the boat and is helpful teaching a very gradual feathering of the blades out of the water. Rowing square blades is a very good way to improve the blade work at the finish. It forces the athlete to keep pressure on the face of the blade to the last moment. Because the blades are coming out of the water squared, this also teaches the athletes to feather the blades later, after the release from the water. We are using square blades again because it is the best exercise to improve blade work. This drill takes care of every aspect of blade work. It forces a smooth horizontal recovery. It facilitates placement because the blade is already square. And it forces the rower to keep the acceleration at the finish, otherwise the blade will get caught in the moment of the release. It is a great drill because it doesn't need too much coaching and it gives instant feedback to the athletes. This sequence can have multiple purposes. It just depends on what the coach wants to emphasize. First, we are using it to teach how to take the boat on the run. We start with the back and arms, and when the pick of the boat is good and direct, we switch to quarter slide without losing the rhythm at the faster speed. Then we continue this from quarter slide to half slide and so on. We are looking for good slide control followed by a quick change of direction. The blade should be close to the water so they don't miss too much water at the catch. The progression sequence can also be used to teach the end of the stroke. The athlete sits patiently at the end of the stroke, keeping pressure on the footboards to the very last moment. Then push the hands down, releasing this pressure by creating an easy rebound of the blades out of the water.
this quad rolling at half slide is using this sequence to create a good rhythm by keeping a good ratio a contrast between the drive and recovery speed they have created a very nice rhythm short slide strokes facilitate the creation of the rhythm it is very easy to be quick through the water but very difficult to be slow and patient on the slide 14 to 16 strokes per minute maximum is suggested rating to start this sequence. We hope you find this DVD useful. The drills that are demonstrated are standard and basic drills. If they are done with a focused and systematic approach, you should achieve a higher technical proficiency in your rowing. We know that not everybody is or was a national team athlete, but the basic principles of good rowing can be achieved by everybody.